Yes, uh, hello again. This is John Ballantrae. So, this video is called Four Steps to Putting It All Together. And I made it because people sometimes struggle in readings because they may have a good idea of what cards mean on their own, what particular cards mean on their own, but they aren't quite sure how to put it together. So, this video shows one method that you might like to try if you found yourself um, in that position of, of not quite being sure of um, how to find threads and how to put it together. There's only four steps and it's basically now changes respect and leadership. Um, I actually added a blog post at www.thetarotblog.com um, and this video is a more complete treatment or description of what to do and how to do it and why to do it as well, I think. So, uh, I think we have to understand something first about the question and it's this, that if you think about the question, and this can be somebody anybody asking any question or somebody who's just there because they want to know, you know, what, tell me what the cards show for me. So the question, and no matter who it is, um, people want what they want. They may also believe that they're never going to get it or they think they can't have it or they don't deserve it, right? Or they would feel guilty if they actually got it. But nevertheless, they still want it, um, whatever it happens to be. And part of the value of a reading, I think, is that it can help people get what they want. So this, this four-step checklist, or this, these four steps, are for the reader to know about, right, and keep in the back of your mind, since um, it's going to give you a way to make sense of the individual cards and how to put them together and how to find um, a useful direction through the spread or through the cards and the spread that you can then pass on to the questioner and it's, it's going to answer their question. It means that the questioner can make progress at the time of the reading and as well when they go off back into their life, right, they're going to be better off than they were before the reading. So the problem is, well I don't know if it's a problem, but the reader can't, we, we as readers can't wave a magic wand to make it all better, make it all disappear. But I think we can help people to get a better grip on what they have to do for themselves. And that brings about improvement. So these steps are um, how to think about cards and how to make use of them so we can be of assistance to the questioner. So a starting point, let, let's say we know the question that's been asked and we've chosen the cards that we expect are going to answer the question, are going to provide the answer. So what you do is you, the reader, talk about the cards with the following four thoughts in mind. There are four of them, but I'm going to take each one on its own and talk a little bit about it so um, there's a little bit of detail. So the first thought that we think about or we have in the back of our minds when we turn the card, when we look at the card, is now, N-O-W. So you point out to the questioner um, to start with what they do now or what they understand now. You don't project ahead to the end of the month or to the time when the problem is going to come to a head. Right? And you don't imagine the worst happening and then once you're in a, an agitated state of mind, try and figure out, try and know in advance, because it hasn't happened yet, to try and know in advance how you'll handle it. Start with a broad picture of what's going on now. So, the question might be dealing with a difficult problem, but um, it, it's a good starting point to see not just what's bad, but also what's good in the current situation or what's good to do with the question that they're asking about. So, the reader looks at the cards that have been chosen and talks about what's good and bad in the cards that come up. Um, and this is important because what's bad about the hanged man is different from what's bad about the empress, right, or some other card. And the value of the tarot, I think, is that the cards that come up, that happen to come up, are going to show where the questioner is right now. And it's a good idea to face what's going on rather than bury their head in the sand. Because you might be, have a, a difficult teenager that you're having to deal with in your life. And you can focus on the problems with the teenager, but at the same time, you've probably also got good friends, right? So you've got, there is some relief or some light at the end of the tunnel that you can, you, you, you can depend on these people 
right? Um, so there's good and bad in your total life at the moment or in the life of the questioner at the time of the reading. Or maybe the person's asking about a bad job and there's too far to travel. But they, they, have good, they, they, they can also have good experience in that work that they do. And that experience can be valuable to an employer, maybe a different employer, um, in the future. So step one is, for the reader is to point out the bad and the good going on right now. So the questioner can have a kind of overview. And that puts them in a stronger position to bring about improvement. So let's. what I did was I picked three cards. So let's say that we got three cards to answer the question. The first one is the, the wheel. If I can place this, okay, the Wheel of Fortune. So if we're thinking, what's good and bad about the wheel? So the wheel can represent change, right? Ups, changes, ups and downs. So we can tell the question, every day is a new day with new opportunities and it's a new beginning. So even though sometimes the breaks don't go our way, um, there's no need to focus exclusively on what hasn't gone wrong because it's the Wheel of Fortune. And there's good fortune as well as bad. Again, let's say we get the Four of Cups as the second card. The third one's going to be the Two of Pentacles, Four of Cups. So again, what's good and bad? Or how, what, what can we say dealing with the good and bad of the Four of Cups? So it shows the person sitting, right? They're sitting below the tree. So maybe what's bad is there's not a lot going on right now. But what's good is there's not a lot going on, and that's okay because you, the questioner, need to think about what to choose, right? Looking at the three cups in front of them, as well as to be aware of what can be chosen because there's a fourth cup in the, a cloud over to the right. Or let's say with the two of the two of pentacles, what's good or bad about it? And so we've got the person here, right? They're balancing in one leg. Okay, so we can say that balancing in one leg may not be that comfortable or easy, right? But it means you can be flexible. And so when the chance presents itself, you're going to be ready to act and ready to move and ready to accept it, right? So that's point one. Understand where you are now and deal with what you're doing right now. The second point is to get the questioner to agree with themselves that they're going to make some step-by-step -step changes for improvement. They can still worry about the future and imagine that things are going to keep getting worse, right? But they accept and they agree that they're going to take some action, some steps, large or small. They're going to make the situation bearable or better, or they're going to change this the power the situation has over them, or whatever it happens to be. But if they can accept um, and agree that they're going to make some changes, that's step two. So the actions, the changes that we're going to talk about, they're simple. And the good that they bring is going to take care of itself and bring more benefits. So it's important for the questioner to take action. Some actions are going to be small, others are going to take extra effort. But all of them, all that we do, all that we try, um, is going to bring about improvement in a condition that we don't like or that we don't want. So again, we look at these three cards or however many cards you've chosen and you examine them and describe what big and small things can be done, what those cards point to, the kinds of actions those cards point to that can be done that are going to make a difference. So again, with the wheel, wheel of fortune, I won't show you this much, much again. So with the wheel, what do we say? Be looking for opportunities in odd places at odd times because, you know, fortune can strike unexpectedly because somebody you might know can mention something in passing, right? And if you are alert, and that's maybe the key for the Wheel of Fortune here. If you're alert, you can make a connection that's going to lead to something better. Whereas, also with the Four of Cups, what do you do? The person's sitting there looking ahead. So we say to the questioner, what other step do you take? Be patient, right? And wait 
and look. Instead of being rattled and anxious and, dis de and despondent and desperate so that you rush into things or you rush at things you don't really want or things that are not really for you. With the Four of Cups sit sitting there or uh, as part of the answer, be patient and sit. That's action, even though nothing appears to be going on. It's a way of acting. So be patient. And with the Two of Pentacles, relax. Uh, and keep nimble because you're on one foot. Keep your sense of balance. So there's three things that can be done that if they are done by the questioner are going to bring about an improvement. The third step is to get the questioner to respect, and that's the, the word, respect the current situation. So it's not like your whole life is totally awful and it's going to, you, you have to scrap it and you've got no hopes of there ever being anything better that's going to take its place. So if you take that view, you're ignoring good parts of yourself, but you're also kind of insulting yourself because when you look at your life, you have made certain efforts that were good, that brought some kind of result. So we ought to respect the good side of our personality because otherwise we insult ourselves and our past and our efforts, and that's not fair. But if there is respect for the current situation, then it can mean as well that you recognise and appreciate the efforts and the position of other people who may be involved in the question or involved in the answer, because they too have their good points. And you may have been ignoring them and what they are about, or maybe you weren't taking seriously these other people who have their own wants that are important to them, even if they're not something that you would want or care about. So respect's important. We don't need to throw out everything and start totally fresh, not knowing what's going to take the place of the condition that we're already familiar with. Some of what you, the questioner has done has been good or valuable, so keep it. Respect, if the questioner can respect at least part of themselves and their earlier efforts, they're going to be in a much stronger position to develop a solution. And I think that's partly what's involved as well. You don't want to follow a method you want to develop a solution. So what kind of respect can come from the Wheel of Fortune? The wheel is life going around. So maybe we point out that life is bigger than you are. When it's winter, it's winter, right? It's winter now. And you accept that it's winter, even if you don't like it. But you don't start crying because it's not summer. You sort of accept, OK, it's winter time. We'll get by it and then spring will come along. And that's sort of respecting the time as well. The kind of thing you might say based on the Wheel of Fortune. For respect with the Four of Cups, he's looking at the three cups in front of him. So maybe what you say is, there is, some, there is good in your life, so enjoy it. Look at it. Be happy with it. Be grateful for it. And be patient until the new possibilities reveal themselves or present themselves. And look at the person sitting there beneath the tree, resting. Relax. And that's respecting the time as well. Then with the Two of Coins, we might say that the Two of Coins, at least you're going to have a choice. And this is better than having no choice at all with somebody else making all your decisions for you and making you do what you maybe don't want to do. Um, it's not actually like that for you with that Two of Pentacles. right? You can choose, you will be able to choose, if not right now, in the near future. And so when we've considered those three steps, that means we can move on to the fourth step, which is one word, and it's leadership. And that's important. We say to the questioner, be a leader. And what you're doing is you lead yourself. You lead yourself out of the problem. Leadership doesn't mean you've got to lead other people. But if you accept that you are a leader or the leader of yourself, the quality of your life improves and that's worth it. We're not talking about becoming president of the universe and acting like a dictator, which you, you might think when you hear the word leadership. But what you do is you look to yourself for leadership, right? And you act correctly for yourself in whatever way that is appropriate. So, how do you lead with the wheel? Um, maybe what you do is you, you, you lead or you 
demonstrate leadership when you notice or when you recognise opportunities for improvement that are going to come along. Right, so take them and try them and see where they lead. And that's leadership, rather than assume that they're going to backfire, so you're not going to do anything because you're afraid. But that's not a good way to live. How do you lead with the Four of Cups? Maybe what you do is you trust yourself to be able to make good decisions and accept, that, uh, accept what's valuable, that you're going to know how to recognise what's valuable and reject what's not right for you. You're going to know when you should move forward and when you should hold back. So take yourself seriously. And that's leadership connected with the Four of Cups. And how do you lead with the Two of Coins? That, that, that card can show indecision and sort of being un, unable to make up your mind. So with the Two of Pentacles, how do you lead? When, when two or more possibilities present themselves, you can go this way or that way. You can pick one or the other. What you do is think it through. Decide. And that's it. And don't start wishing you'd chosen the other way and getting all tangled up and paralysed. So leadership with the Two of Pentacles is decide whatever. Trust yourself to make the right decision and then go with it. And don't five minutes later try and go the other way or, or change your mind and back off. Leadership is partly being decisive. So these are the four steps of putting it all together. You can use them with or without cards, but I think the cards that you chose or the cards that you choose, and it could be a Celtic cross, it could be anything, they're useful because we can know what specific or what particular actions to take that make sense for the answer to that question or, or to that question right now. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you have comments or leave them below, um, but if I don't reply, it's because I cannot figure out how to access the comment section to, to add to them. Um, but you can always email me, blntr at yahoo.com, and we can take it with it from there. And if you like the video, why don't you tell your friends? Okay, I'll be back in a little while with something else. Thank you.